Well, the ongoing controversy surrounding Defense Minister Harjit Sajjan is our top story for the panel today. Joined this morning by Laura Babcock of Power Group Communications and David Wills with the Group Media Profile. Welcome one and all. And yeah, let's turn to uh, Sajjan. Quite the uh, fiery question period yesterday. Laura, first to you on this. Uh, the government says it was a mistake. He's apologized. It's time to move on. The opposition thinks it's a fireable <laughs> offense. What do you say? Well, I think that the positioning of it as it was a mistake, and Trudeau very cleverly said as Canadians, we just accept apologies, right? <laughs> He's trying to let us all know how we should respond to us, which is which is clever. I mean, the thing here with Sijin is that he said it was a mistake. He didn't try to say, like, Brian Williams, I misremembered, or, you know, something like that. He didn't make up some silly excuse. Uh, and politicians brag. So if the worst thing he does is brag, then he'll probably weather this. However, he is in a position now where he might be putting lives at risk, and he has a lot of authority. And so to claim that he had more valor than he did, I think hurts him internally with the armed forces, and I think he's got to do a lot to rebuild that bridge. But politically, he'll probably survive it this time. However, if it becomes a pattern, Jeff, if there's, mm. there's been two now, if there's three, then I think it's a different story. Well, there's a story that emerged late yesterday, uh, David, that uh, the minister not only inflated his role in Afghanistan, but downplayed it at times to the ethics commissioner to avoid an inquiry into uh, what went on with Afghan detainees. So is there more to this? Is this going to live on? And can uh, Sajid live? Well, I do think it's going to live on because of what we saw happen yesterday, is that once you dance with the truth uh, the way that he did, and he also tried to downplay his initial apology, is that as a, it scratch more and they push a little bit more and more, they start looking at other things that he said. And we saw it start out to, uh, yesterday. It's happening more today. And I think that really what comes here is, is there was no reason why he misrepresented himself that way. He, had, he has an excellent track record. He has an excellent uh, resume. But now when you can't believe that, mm -hmm. you have to then push a little harder on what else he said. And that's what we're going to see roll out, and that's going to be determined whether he survives this And he time. keeps saying, and as a communications mm -hmm. expert, Laura, what do you think of the tactic that I make no excuses, uh, I own this, but to David's point, he's not answering the question why, why this Yeah, and I think we all want to know why, because you want to see if there's something deeper there. But in terms of not equivocating, and like we saw with Spicer, when he made those Holocaust comments in the U.S., the first three times he tried to contextualize it, and then he just said, forget it, no excuses, and people finally said, okay. So it's the right tactic to say no excuses there's n but we have to now watch test against delivery if he does this again there'll be tough scrutiny on him mm. and I don't think he's going to get another chance yeah David I want to turn to the prime minister here he's really digging his heels in and he's uh, standing by his man is the prime minister's credibility on the line here is this tactically smart for him because if something else uh, appears uh, to be a, a mistruth or that uh, sage and misled us then is the prime minister's credibility after standing behind the minister on the line well I think the prime minister has a lot more options than the minister does uh, he initially stood by him now there's new information information coming out. It'll be very interesting to see what Justin Trudeau does uh, today and in the days following as they get pushed a little bit more. Uh, but, you know, it's right for him to stand by his, the person that he chose in that role, support them. But as new information comes out, that becomes harder. And mm -hmm. I think that we may see him weighing his options but this week. But he'll have an easy out. The Prime Minister can say, he came to me and I accepted his resignation. <laughs> you know, I stood by him. But he, so it's an out for the Prime Minister. If things get too mm -hmm. sticky, he doesn't have to say he made a mistake in supporting his man, standing by his man. He gets the out. Okay, I want to turn now to Senator Don Meredith, because some former aides have now come forward. They've spoken exclusively to a Huff Post. Here's what one of those aides uh, had to say. They said, uh, quote, once the doors closed, I felt like I was trapped, and he was able to touch me and be very all over me. Uh, this in response to uh, Mr. Meredith is a former pastor who would apparently uh, pray with uh, staffers. Now, his future has been in the air since an ethics committee found that he abused his power by entering into a relationship with a 16-year-old. And, uh, David, should he still be holding here? I mean, these accusations first surfaced in 2014. Should Mr. Meredith still be holding the title of honorable here in 2017? I, I, absolutely not. I think that, you know, if the Senate finds that it doesn't have its enough power to get rid of him, they're going to have to look at Senate rules. Uh, this, this is really uh, just adding to the fact that people don't believe the Senate has any value. And if they can't deal with their own members, especially in light of these accusations, the, the enormous investigation that's gone on here, mm -hmm. he is not honorable, and I think he's doing a disservice by hanging on with the Senate. Okay, Laura, last word to you on this. Are the wheels of justice grinding too slowly here in the Senate? Well, the Senate's got to speed up because they're facing an existential crisis. We're still not convinced of their value proposition or their role. I mean, what are they supposed to be, the this, this chamber of sober second thought with people like this in there? So I think there's a majority now of senators who are favoring expulsion. We'll see whether they're able to do that. But they've got to start to clean up their own house before we decide that they deserve to have that house. All right, Laura Babcock and David Wills, appreciate the time. Thank you so much.